Hello everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Lakshmi Prabha Sudarshanam, Alai Srihari, working for Enoplexus in Pune, playing the role of a digital transformation leader in data science day. So today we will be discussing about artificial intelligence approaches in stock market analysis. Artificial intelligence or AI in short, in fintech, then AI in particularly stock market analysis, then AI in stock prediction, next technical analysis, then fundamental analysis, finally combining both technical and fundamental analysis and how AI helps in both. So what is AI, artificial intelligence? I think this group does not need any introduction about artificial intelligence or data science. Um, let me ask you, how many of you know about data science? Um, you can raise hands or message quickly chat. Okay. Anything from chat? Yeah, I see. Okay, I see some pressures as well. All right. If you are a fresher, then Analytics Vidya is a good platform to start data science, your journey in data science. So in brief, artificial intelligence or AI is beyond your human brain, using your human brain to reduce human efforts. AI comes in many forms, from simple automation to complex machine learning algorithms. Uh, it is using, it, it covers a wide range of topics like statistics, data science, machine learning algorithms, optimistic approaches, operation research, and so on. So if you want to learn and know more about data science, you can uh, join in analytics with you. And coming to fintech, if you have already transferred money to someone using an app, or if you have already downloaded your statement online, bank statement online, then already you are a part of a multi-billion industry that is called FinTech. FinTech means financial technology. It seems simple, right? But it covers a wide range of topics, businesses and technology. It can include everything from cashless payments to crowdfunding to virtual currencies to robo advisors and so on. And this is just the beginning. There are a lot of things to be covered in fintech. Even big companies are going big on it. Think about Amazon Pay or Alipay or Apple Pay, right? But there are a lot of risks associated as well like data compromise data compliance data privacy and so on even then for the companies and consumers here this is not just a buzzword it is more than that and it's a big business opportunity all right so how ai helps in financial sector it is often used to perform menial tasks that a business would otherwise need to pay a worker to do AI will power 95% of all customer interactions in the next decade. This has been predicted in many financial articles and literature. And artificial intelligence could increase the probability of all industry by an average of 39% by 2035. So some of the applications of AI in fintech, number one, stronger security. So as I said, there are risks associated with fintech like data privacy, being passwords getting hacked and many things are there. We can use AI. So AI in cybersecurity today comes in the form of chatbots and enhancing human workers through automation. Number three, improve customer service through chatbots. Number four, client risk profiling. Earlier, people used to do manually, analysts used to do manually this uh, client profile rating from low to high. But nowadays, classification models are trained with the previous data to rate the client profile from low to high and a lot of time saving. Then, user behavior analysis. 
that comes to fraud detection as well and then algorithmic trading so these are some of the applications i have mentioned some of the most important applications of ai in fintech but there are a lot more all right narrowing down to ai in stock market analysis first some applications ai reduces research time for finding stocks for example in order to find out or figure out which stock to invest in that itself will take a lot of time Appro approaching broker approaching many research many companies documents right but using ai analytics you can crunch all types of data from different sources within seconds and this helps stock market especially in india uh, people have logged logged in demat a lot so the number of demat accounts in india jumped to 63% in financial year 2021 to 2022 so this this has been published on 15th april 2022 and even it reached to at least 80% in this financial year ai helps automate the sale and purchase of stocks and ai also helps reduce the overall cost of trading and finally last but not the least ai helps in prediction this is the most crucial part and today we will be focusing on this prediction is an integral part of the stock market in general and stock trading in specific there are two types of analysis fundamental analysis and technical analysis when coming to stock market analysis in fundamental analysis an investor looks into company's growth profit and loss statements news channels interviews and many things whereas in technical analysis an investor looks into the historical data notices patterns uses many statistical models and machine learning algorithms to predict the future people generally split into groups and debate that one analysis is always better than the other but ai helps to combine these both fundamental and technical analysis in one place what is more ai can help you perform news uh, sentiment analysis blogs and interviews to understand and predict how the stock will perform in a more accurate manner and this improves the overall chances of you making the right prediction okay with that all introduction um, let me quickly ask how many of you know uh, some basics of fintech here about stock market analysis in particular maybe you can raise hands okay seems good all right um thanks for your response um so um we will be discussing a lot about machine learning models and data science algorithms or statistical models uh, maybe uh, whoever is very new to this uh, who have not heard about these uh, models um uh, can check into it later after this session and uh, you can again look back into the video all right so let us go to the first part technical analysis um in um stock market analysis uh, that deals with predicting the prices using statistical models or machine learning models for illustration we will be dealing with hang seng index today which is hong kong's hang seng index all right so what is a stock market index a stock market index or just an index is a number that measures the relative value of a group of stocks it is maybe a weighted average of all its components suppose there is an index and there are 500 components in it and an index represents a weighted average of all its components all its 500 components sometimes it may be a weighted average and in case of some other index it may be a different uh, mathematical formula or a statistical measure it depends uh, from stock to stock but in general it helps to track the performance of a group of stocks as the stocks in this group change value the index also changes value for example 
the standard and uh, poor's index um, that is s p 500 in short has uh, it represents a group of 500 stock us stock uh, associated with it if an index goes up by one percent then that means the total value of the securities which make up the index have gone up by one percent in value so these are the components of Hong Kong Hang Seng Index and totally it has around 30 components. And I have started from zero because in order to use Python, Python's first index is zero. So you can feel free to make it one, but for Python, I have started from zero to 29. So there are 30 components of Hang Seng Index. And uh, I will tell you the approaches to how to deal with and how to predict the index as well as the components. All right. So when talking about prediction or any machine learning problem, you should not directly jump into prediction at first place. Before that, there are a lot of things to be done. First is exploratory data analysis or in short EDA. In case of stock market analysis, the second step is to predict the trend. Trend is nothing but whether a stock increases or decreases. It represents the increase or decrease of a stock for a period. Number three, find out the most influential stocks for a particular index. For example, we are considering Hong Kong Hansen Index, or maybe you can consider BSE. And then you see which are all the stocks which are influencing a particular stock. Maybe you can consider an IT stock and then you find out the most influential stocks, but these are all using AI. Okay, so let us start from EDA or exploratory data analysis. I shall quickly share this dashboard or an app which I have built for a New York Data Science Academy. So let me quickly share you the app. And so the dashboard is getting loaded. Um, allow me one second. So this is a dashboard which I have built uh, for New York Data Science Academy. And basically, uh, this is a World Stock Market Index dashboard and uh, which deals about all the EDAs, exploratory data analysis for various indices, like indices from USA, global indices, Asia Pacific indices, and Euro. And uh, the topic of interest was to find out what happened after US President Trump's win. That was the topic of interest. Why I chose this one? Because it was there was all a new spread and there was a lot of buzz that stock market crashed during and after US President Trump's win. So that's why uh, I chose this experiment. And uh, this is a kind of crisis. This was believed to be a kind of crisis. Similarly, you can take any uh, crisis period like COVID maybe or a pandemic or an economic crisis in 2009 in US, so anything. So coming here, if you can navigate through the tab, um, so quickly I shall move to Hong Kong, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index. And uh, so this has all the index, right? From Asia, China and everything it just has. So let me choose this first, Australia, Indonesia, and everything, India's, everything you have. So this, this, this re completely represents the exploratory data analysis of this. And there is a blog I have written for the same academy, and you can have a look at it. So, so this is how you have to uh, do exploratory data analysis, plotting various kinds of charts. So the x-axis represents the dates, and the y-axis represents prices, closing values. And not just line charts, you can just play around with candlestick charts, which is also an important uh, chart for uh, stock market analysis. And then area charts, bar charts, and then dots. So these are all just various forms of analysis and representation to dive deeper into the analysis. So let us stick to this line chart and you can see on x-axis dates and y-axis closing prices. And the period selected was from uh, Jan 2016 till Jan 2018. So this represents the overall period. But if we see this, this is just an overview. This is just bird's eye view. 
so we have to dive further deeper into it and split the period so what i did i split the period entire period into three the first one is before us president trump's win or before that election time so that is jan 2016 or uh, jan 2016 to october 2016 and uh, the next one is crucial moment that is the exact presidential election time from october 2016 till december 2016 and finally after us president trump came to throne what happened from jan 2017 till jan 2018 so if you see here right you can see uh, the chart and uh, so what is the next step what ideas do you get from this analysis before uh, let i explain detail i would like to know some comments from you right stationary check yes yes how will you know some index performed well rising trends right stocks crashed at a critical moment good yes you can go for decker fuller's test for finding stationary or not right growth rate indication right all right so uh, quite good answers so in order to deal with such explanations let me go back to the slides so in order to perform these kind of uh, analysis you should know about time period right so what is time period any data represented with respect to date is a time series data and i'm not going to go much deeper into time series because that itself is an one hour session but in brief let me explain so you see two boxes here right these are two examples and the first layer represents the data and every time series has three components so the second layer represents seasonality what is seasonality it seasonality is a repeating pattern over a period of time for example consider an ice cream business we will know that the business will be always higher in summer than in winter and this pattern repeats for every year right so this kind of repeating pattern getting captured in the time series data is called seasonality component then the third layer represents trend so what is trend as i said before it is just an overall increase or decrease for a period of time and in the first box right in the first example there is not much trend whereas in the second box you can see that it is decreasing right it has a decreasing trend all right and the final layer is nothing but irregular component which captures the all the remaining left behind part right so uh, any every time series has all these components and uh, the important point to be noted is whenever you see seasonality before prediction you have to remove seasonality out of it from the data all right and there are two kinds of time series one is stationary versus non stationary so stationary time series is one whose statistical properties such as mean median variance all will be constant over time or in layman terms it will have a pattern or a fixed pattern like normal distribution or uniform distribution something whereas um, in non stationary time series data there will be no such pattern it will be all random and it will often drift with respect to time so what happens its prediction is like shooting a moving target we will generally say a random walk to represent non stationary behavior of stock market in finance uh, most of the stock market data or non stationary and that makes their prediction nearly impossible it is very hard to shoot a moving target right that's what it happens but whenever you see a non stationary series the first step is you have to convert that into stationary using some uh, formula similarly and also to remove seasonality so these are the two points to be kept in mind before proceeding and this is a nice book uh, you can have a look at it uh, whoever interested in more in finance all right so now uh, coming back to uh, the example 
the unique period or um, crucial moment. Let me share back again. So here you can see that before presidential election, right? Period before when it was the trend is increasing, but uh, there are a lot of ups and downs, right? This is not stable at all. Of course, this is all non-stationary. Coming to crucial moment, yes, the stock market, it didn't crash completely, but it was decreasing for three months during the uh, election time and during uh, uh, Trump's win, uh, there was all some disturbances and some havoc. So it started to decrease. But then after you see that when he came to throne, it started to increase. The trend has been increasing. And what is interesting is it reached an historical highest value. That is the interesting thing here. And uh, there was uh, a gossip or belief that the stock market completely crashed. But no, it was just for three months. There were some disturbances, but then it started to increase like anything. And it, and it has seen a historical increase, rise in the value. So these things uh, you have to observe from your data as well. Whenever, whichever data you want to choose, whichever stock you are interested, you have to observe these analysis and uh, you have to come out with your, all right. So coming back to slides. All right. So we have completed exploratory data analysis. And what are the questions? How to train the models to extract its best for Hang Seng components as we are considering Hang Seng index. So how to train the model? Second, which stocks will influence the movement of a particular stock, right? And this boils down to how to predict the trend of major components of Hang Seng index. And so the problem was framed as a two class classification problem. Uh, this may be uh, very, very new to some of the people here, uh, but uh, so there are in data science, uh, especially in supervised learning, there are two kinds of algorithm like regression and classification. And here this problem is represented as a classification problem. And there are two classes, it's zero and one. If you feel difficulty here, you can always uh, check with analytics with your other lectures and then come back here for this application. All right. Um, so this one and zero, uh, there are two classes. So one represents whether a stock will increase or not. And uh, uh, zero represents uh, whether the stock will not increase. So one represents increase and zero represents not increase. And the experimental period was 11th March 2013 till 8th March 2018. So before moving on to the model part, uh, I would like to discuss about performance evaluation metric. And there are a lot of evaluation metrics uh, for classification problem, especially. The simplest one is accuracy. Accuracy is the percentage of correctly classified samples. And the standard one is ROZ AUC score. Uh, it is nothing but the area under the curve plotted between uh, the true positives and false positives. And higher the scores, better the performance of model for both these scores. And there are a lot of other uh, metrics available and people are very much interested in F-score, uh, precision and recall. But that was not necessary for me because the data was quite well balanced. It is not imbalanced. So balance and imbalance means that it, it, is, it is equally balanced. Like there are no such classes one higher than classes zero. It is not so. This may be a little bit difficult to understand, but you will get it. All right. So coming to this experimental setup, um, I shall quickly show you the code. So uh, there is a Git page available and I have pushed all the codes, related codes to here. And there is a blog also. You can go and check it, uh, look at it here anytime. And uh, so you can see the data and all the codes available here. First, uh, let me walk you through the data. So coming to data, so these are the 30 components of Hang Seng Index, which I showed you before. And then what you can see is some of the world's major indices like Dow Jones, some of the European uh, indices, and then Mexico, uh, Indonesia's Jakarta, 
and nasdaq of course uh, nifty nyse tokyo's nikkei and so on and so forth right so you have to consider all these major indices as well as all the 30 components as well um, so that you will find out the most influential stocks we we will never know without analysis that which stocks may influence another stock for example uh, you may be interested in an it stock but an another oil and gas industry stock may influence this one or a bank stock may influence this it stock we will never know so these experiments we have to conduct every time and find out uh, which stocks will influence the other stock so that's why we have to consider a lot of features so let me show you the data here so the first column is the date uh, it starts from uh, march 2013 Uh, so the first column is the date, and uh, this data is a time series data. It is associated with date. So we have a uh, uh, five columns, right? Uh, open, high, low, close, and the volume. Uh, let us not talk about adjacent close for now, but uh, we have four columns or five columns. So first, what does open column represents? Open represents the opening value of a stock. that means the very first value for the day whenever the market is open uh, for example in india it opens at uh, 9:15 am but it uh, the time is not important because it varies from country to country and also we are considering all the global indices so the open opening stock represents the very first value of the stock and high represents the highest value it reached for that day and low represents the lowest value it reached for that day close represents the last value the final value for that day whenever a uh, stock market closes at 3:30 pm or 3 pm but it differs from country to country it represents the final value for the day and one more thing low and close are not same because the market may have reached low even at afternoon or sometime at uh, 1 pm so low represents the lowest value it reached for the day and close represents the final value for the day adjacent close is not important because it just represents a percentage more one percentage or two percentage modification of close maybe some average of all these values or uh, some percentage added due to company's performance but we can stick to close for our analysis and finally volume volume represents the number of stock traded for that day so you can see here complete data from 2013 to 2018 all right and as i said these are all time series because every one of them is associated with time and open is a time series high is a time series low is a time series and close is a time series in general uh, people will represent this as ohlt values so all of these are time series and as i said before two points to be noted one is if the data is non stationary we have to convert it into stationary before going on to production and the second step is if there is seasonality then the seasonality has to be removed from the series all right so going back to slide so these are the features for the model uh, volume trader and percentage change of ohlc for each of the 30 components hang seng index of course that's what we are predicting some of the major indices like nasdaq or nyse or um, nscbsc and some of the major currencies like euro usd or even inr anything and so when you are predicting for monday suppose you want to predict uh, the stock movement uh, for monday then you have to consider friday's data right that is what historical data means so you want to predict for monday and you are considering friday's data that is october 14th data 15th and 16th being holidays 14th data but it is not just october 14th that is one day's data you may have to consider 13 12 october 12 11 and many things like it depends on the model so you have to do experiments and find out that whether you have to consider only one day's data or 
five days data and so on so i'm not talking about the training data complete data it is it should be many years it should be for at least 3 to 5 years but i'm talking about taking the prior days data even as the columns that's what i mean so i'm not talking about the rows i'm talking about the columns so in my experiment i considered that even one day or five days data would be better so if you consider for one day each of these open high low close values of all the 30 components and the index and major indices then the number of features were 310 if you increase it to 5 days then it was 1060 and if you increase it more to 10 days then the number of predictors were uh, 1810 so like this it went on and on and then i found out that we can stick to one day or five days after computing the conducting the experiments and computing the accuracies and there will be some missing values why because in holidays in india need not be a holiday for us and other countries for example an independence day august 15th need not be a holiday for us and other countries so what we have to do we have to fill in and impute the missing values the better guess would be to use forward fill that means you assume that for that day we can fill it up with the previous days values for example if today is a holiday so you can say that okay i shall fill it up with the 14th values here all the ohlt values or sometimes in some places you can use zero but if you use a lot of zeros then the matrix will be sparse the matrix will become a sparse matrix so better we can uh, stick to forward fill for initial experiment and then you can go ahead with um, more mathematical formula or some statistical measure for that but forward fill is the best wild guess at last target what you are about to predict one or zero so how will you define in training set target will be 1 if percentage change in close will be greater than 0.5 or else it is 0 right so you can go and check these this blog where i have a uh, detail about all these experiments and features okay at last the results so i have tried a lot of classifiers and the code is available in github i will show you in short so uh, there are a lot of models even available in literature as well like a uh, logistic regression support vector machines random forest gradient boosting xgb and even neural network which is an advanced topic of artificial intelligence so there are a lot of models available so you can go and look into literature and uh, uh, start learning about them in literature for this analysis uh, predicting the movement of stock market analysis uh people were able to achieve only till 68% and that was the best accuracy available in literature if you consider all the components of the index if you are predicting for index then 68% accuracy is the best yes of course it is not a higher accuracy but that is the maximum we could reach with all of the components because we have all the features but if you focus only for two or three of the components like for example aac technologies or some oil and gas company then you may you should be able to achieve more than 95% or at least 90% all right so coming back to this analysis so logistic regression was just uh, giving 59% whereas uh, support vector machines and gradient boosting reached till uh, 67% and random forest also stayed at 63% okay next step so i see how to know that our model is working well or now um so you it is it is based on accuracy only so you will know about the metrics i showed like roc auc and accuracy yes of course zero is not preferred you can use mean or forward fill is the better better guess mean can be used but if there are outliers then mean will lead into um, a bad value so forward fill is better yes so how can we combine the external factors uh, i will come to that in part 2 in a short time uh, sanjay so how does a stock influence another stock i will also explain that at the end of this experiment 
So confusion matrix is used uh, to compute precision recall and F1 score uh, only if the data is not at all balanced. Uh, here the data was very well balanced. Even in stock market, the data will be always balanced and it is non-stationary. So these are you know the standard nature of uh, stock market data. All right. So I think we have covered most of the questions here. So let me go back to the next step. How to improve accuracy? Obviously, the first step is to increase the training data. So I was using three years before. Now I'm going to use four years of data and then test for just one year. So this, this is obviously necessary in order to avoid overfitting or underfitting or uh, not just the model to learn a lot. It is just under learning or it is not learned well. So in that case, you have to increase the training data. Uh, you can use more latest data or you can use some of the history. If you are considering this pandemic, you cannot use much uh, 2020 data or 2021 data. If you are about to predict for this year, you cannot use the pandemic data because it will be all messy and some of the missing and loss of ups and downs. So then you have to rely on the historical data like 2018, 19, 20, or even you can start from 2015. So you have to rely on that. So based on experiments only, you will come to know that which, which one to be preferred. But if the data in the if the period is good, then you can rely on the latest data than the lost 10 years back data or five years back data. One of the observations you can uh, use. So increasing the training data is the first step to improve accuracy. But you can see uh, the model showed just 1% increase, especially logistic regression and random forest from 59 to 60 and 63 to 64. And SVC and gradient boosting remain the same. And it is a good news because the models were not overfitting. You see that here, right? So these terminologies may be very new for some people, but it you, you will get to know about it. So SVG and gradient boosting are, they, they remain stable, they perform stable, and they were not overfitting. And uh, the next step is to do some feature engineering. So I already showed you that there were at least 300 features for this model, right? Even if, if it is a simpler model, it has to be at least 300 features. So in order to reduce the features, what you can do, first you train with some tree-based models like random forest or gradient boosting or even XGB. Then you extract the top 20 features using SHAP analysis and finally retrain the remaining models with these features. So we are reducing from 300 features to 20 features and these are the best features which model gives us. All right. So with that, you can see logistic regression improved from 60% to 66%. It is a huge improve, improvement. And SVG, it remained the same. It shows that it is not overfitting at all. So if you say a stable accuracy, then the model is not overfitting or underfitting. It is performing well and uh, you, you, it, is, it is a plateau here. You can't go above that and that has to be accepted and uh, that is the best model is showing. So these are some of the observations here. So at last, the final observations and recap. So we did first exploratory data analysis and we have seen that different machine learning algorithms will perform differently on different stock market. Number three, the model which gets trained in smooth period and predicts well in shock period can be productionized. Like it can be used for further future predictions. For example, if you are able to train the model before pandemic and if it is able to predict even during pandemic, then it is, it is obviously a better model. But this is not the price prediction. It is just predicting the trend. We are just doing initial analysis only. And it is very essential in the case of stock market. So we are in the initial stage and this itself is a huge experiment which you have to do. All right. So the third point, coming to third point, the stock movement of a particular stock is not just dependent on its own over Chelsea value, but also on other stocks. So I shall show you an example here. Okay. So now you can see this code. Um, so I shall walk you through from the beginning. 
um so this is just importing features and all and uh, this is the data i'm importing data and uh, so you can see i i'm representing uh, open high low close that is ohlc values uh, for the first component that is zero because python uh, python's first index is zero number 1 represents second component and so on and so forth so these are the 30 components of uh, the hansen index and we are further adding other indices as well right uh, like major currencies as well so totally there should be 58 uh, components and 310 features and i showed you that um, for one stock some other stock will be influencing it right for example so target zero represents the very first component right aac technologies and it is influenced by when you look at the best features from after you train the model and you extract the features you can see a lot of variations here of course you should see its own ohlc values that is for the stock zero its own close its own high its own low should be there that should be also influencing but other than that you can see volume 58 is influencing that means the 58th stock was influencing the first stock 15 open 15 low 48 close 44 volume 4 that means the Uh, uh, volume of the fifth stock was influencing the first stock, right? High forty three, close fifty six. So see how many variations are here for even the first stock, right? So let me go back to. Do you remember this zero fifteen, um, fifty eight, uh, sixty thirty one four, right? So we shall go back to the slides and see the components. okay so here we are and so this is the first uh, component and for aac technologies we saw four was influencing that is china some dairy company see some dairy company was influencing a technology stock and if we go back to 14 it was number 14 right so we should look at 15 so some development company right so on and so forth and china mobile limited yeah so for first stock many other uh, stocks were influencing this technology stock right and then 58 and all represents some of the major currencies and some of the major components right so similar way you have to analyze each and every stock and find out which stock which other stocks are influencing the particular stock okay so getting back to the observations all right so as a final take away home message is for a trader or an investor to watch all the prices of his own stock uh, for example aac technologies but also the other uh, stocks which which are influencing that stock like maybe an oil or oil and gas or maybe some mobile company or maybe some other bank anything and you will get to know, get to know about it from these experiments all right so now we are done with the technical analysis we are ready with the top 20 features uh, uh, after analyzing the trend and after doing a lot of experiments we are ready with some of the top features and uh, most influential stocks we will know now coming to the external factors or the fundamental analysis so you will know you will know about these external factors from fundamental analysis and i'm going to tell you the ai approaches in fundamental analysis right so fundamental stock analysis what is it companies create plenty of financial documents right like earnings per release quarterly financial report like 10q or 10k income statement balance sheet statement of cash flows these are very less i am mentioning here but these are the most important documents you have to have a look at so quarterly statement will be available every quarter an annual report will be available every year so on and so forth right 
so you have to look at it at regular intervals maybe every month or maybe uh, every week we will never know and these are all coming in forms of some pdf or maybe an images a scanned pdf or maybe a company web page like a form of text and this is all unstructured data and how will you do all these how will you look at all these manually it is it is a lot of manual efforts right that is where ai comes to help so we have to convert this unstructured data to structured ones structured tables with the help of ai to reduce manual efforts so how does ai help to extract information from financial reports within few seconds automatically without any manual effort so what i'm going to tell you is using ai how you can extract the ratios some of the financial ratios which are also very important to be considered for stock market prediction so prediction is our final aim and already we have completed our first analysis technical analysis as a second step we are going to extract ratios which will influence the prediction and using ai so when you pass in the pdf like a uh, financial statement like um, 10k or 10q you will extract these information within a fraction of second it is just maybe 5 seconds for a 500 pages pdf and 5 seconds for even 1000 pages of pdf it's all with respect to ai so you will extract interest coverage ratio total net leverage ratio current ratio quick ratio there are many solvent ratios liquidity ratios many things so you will extract the ratio its time its values like 3.75 to 1 and total leverage ratio should be this and this and uh, um, uh, it should be 5 to 1 between this period and so on and so forth so you extract with ease using ai all these information right this is a kind of automation step um so the problem is to convert pdf or image to text and then you will have a whole lot of paragraph right in a pdf you will see a lot of paragraphs lot of tables using ai you split the paragraphs you split the entire text into paragraphs and identify the right paragraph whether it should be the interest ratio or net coverage ratio anything you find out that and using ner you get the names stock names time what are the values uh, etc you get them and finally get it in the form of table so this is a flow chart for that and uh, you can follow these techniques uh, to uh, extract those uh, information uh, financial ratios or something and i am not uh, giving the code here and uh, because these are all advanced uh, ai and uh, language based models nlp techniques especially so you will get to know about this and once you have all this information right so from technical analysis you collected some 20 best features and then from fundamental analysis you collected the information of ratios now you are ready for prediction now you pass in all this information into that uh, prediction model and you get the stock market prediction and what model will you be using you will be using lstm model that is it is a deep neural network and it is an advanced model and it is always recommended to use lstm model to predict the final stock prices so this with this we come to an end so we we discussed about the technical analysis and how to use ai to extract some important features out of it and then use a uh, fundamental analysis and to extract some of the important ratios financial ratios out of it and how ai helps in that finally how to combine these two technical analysis and fundamental analysis into one lstm model using for prediction okay so 
suppose you have this a stock of company x trades at rupees 10 and considering the market sentiment and previous data ai predicted it to touch rupees 20 by the end of year all good yeah it is completely possible but what if another pandemic hits the planet or if the ceo of the company defrosts the company right some unexpected events even that cannot be predicted using sentiment analysis from news there are many lot works there right sentiment analysis of news from uh, even from company interviews like ceo's interviews you you can do many things using text using sentiment analysis using audio video many things can be extracted but what is the probability or guarantee that will it will all go good right no the what is the final verdict we can use ai to reduce manual efforts and to make smart decisions but they are also prone to errors right it is not that always it will be good these predictions will be good but we can depend on ai at least to some level with some confidence for right all right so any questions so i see few questions i may go from the last can we get the link to github repo i think already it has been shared um right oil prices um like change in oil cost transportation business this is one parameter can you tell other factors also um this is one parameter uh can we do overfitting which is one parameter um sanjay this is one parameter can you tell other factors also okay so i think you were talking about you were mentioning about this fundamental analysis i think so which is target parameter so target is always the closing value it should be decided based on one or zero whether it will increase or not uh, or not and then uh, for technical analysis and coming to prediction you should always focus on your stock of interest it is your you you have to decide which stock you want to focus that is the target and you can always choose the closing value as your target uh, because other values like open or high or low will not make any uh, significance in that so you can always rely on what would be the closing value and you will get of course the some confidence interval that you can um, uh, predict or you can figure out uh, uh, these things so over chelsea is open high low and close mind and uh, how do you extract the 20 best features and how is this done in python so uh, you can always uh, check look into the github code which i have shared uh, there are uh, options and uh, there are a lot available in sklearn uh, uh, documentation as well there are a lot of things available outside so you can do using python uh, to reduce features can we use pca um uh, yes uh chandra you can use pca but the thing is um it will not be a smart guess pca will give you any features it will just focus on it is just a, a vector right uh, it will just focus on reducing the number of features but if you want to make some smart guess then it should be uh only based on three based models only xgb or gb can help you in that how can we reduce overfitting of a model so overfitting can be reduced by using more training data and some adjustments in hyperparameter tuning so those things will be helpful and uh, okay if our model is ready then new data is added so how to work on that new data mm, yes so you can get more more and more data as i said before you can get it from past or from future and uh, you can add into that model so that you can adjust the model you can increase the training data all right so outliers yes you can do outliers check um, um uh, you can just plot uh, some box plot or something you can check the outliers um yes but it depends on uh, it depends from data to data from index to index so that code in github it's only for hansen index and it is only for from 2013 to 2018 it is it is looking good but if you have if you change the data if you change the period 
then it may be anything right so for that you have to again fine tune the model and then if you want to change the index then again you have to fine tune the model and find and you have to change the data so you can use that code and you have to change the data and you have to if necessary if required you have to you may have to change the um, hyperparameters and you can conduct your experiments and uh, and you can uh, have your own observations all right so i think we are good here yeah over to you analytics vidya yeah Th thanks a lot uh, lakshmi prabhas kari on behalf of analytics vidya i would like to thank you for your time and for delivering such a wonderful session i'm sure our audience found it insightful and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in the future sure thank you thanks for hosting me today and uh, of course my official name is i would like to uh, point out here uh, lakshmi prabhas sudarshanam you can find me in linkedin and shrigari is my nickname yeah thank you Thank you.